Good morning, everyone. This is Michael Armali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 11th, 2020, recorded on 9.22 a.m. Eastern Time. Let's always remember our first responders and everybody on 9-11 and everyone who lost their life and take it a moment of silence for them. Proceeding on with the rest of today, we do have a couple of areas of disturbance to watch in the Atlantic Basin. First of all, with Invest Area 96L, which is located here in the Bahamas, and it really does have that look here this morning with a pretty, um, it's still rather disorganized, but a semi-organized area of deep convection firing near the Bahamas. This is all south of Freeport and uh, near Nassau and also Andrews Island, which is right here. This is going to be continuing off towards the west over the next a day or two. And this is going to bring impacts obviously first to the Bahamas and then also tonight into tomorrow for portions of the Southern Florida Peninsula and the Florida Keys. Again, generally, the impacts will consist of heavy rainfall, gusty winds from time to time, maybe a couple of isolated stronger storms or an isolated tornado or two as this generally heads off towards the west. Again, right now, the biggest concern is going to be heavy rainfall, but we're not expecting this to really ramp up and take off uh, as it's moving westward. Again, a lot is going to depend on how close this gets to land interaction over the next several days or so. And that is going to really be the key going forth with time. Elsewhere across the Atlantic Basin right now, we do have a couple of other disturbances to watch. First of all, Tropical Storm Paulette, which does look a little bit better organized this morning with deep convection firing closer to the center as shear is now starting to lessen. We also have the remnant circulation of Tropical Storm Rene, uh, probably soon to be on the verge of becoming a tropical depression. Again, this storm has not been firing any deep convection over the past couple of hours and is uh, probably due to the fact that it's now getting in some of the cooler wake and upwelled waters from Tropical Storm Paulette over here as Paulette kind of made the same journey across here. So uh, a lot of it is due to the thermodynamic response and there's also about uh, maybe 10 to 15 knots of vertical wind shear out of the easterly direction associated with Rene right now. As across the rest of the tropics, we are watching Invest Area 95L which has a 90% chance of development over the next couple of days. But again, models are very uncertain about where this goes. And there's a lot of considerable uncertainty here, which we'll talk about in just a moment. First of all here, we're going to take a stop at the five-day graphical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, the eight o'clock tropical weather outlook. And again, here is Invest Area 90, or 96L with a 60% chance over the next five days. Again, this could be a threat for portions of the Florida Panhandle or the uh, eastern Louisiana and southern Mississippi and southern Alabama regions. Again, mainly we could see a, you know, obviously a tropical depression or storm that could form somewhere in this region over the next few days. Now, not really expecting this to actually get its act together significantly and strengthen into a major hurricane by any means. But it is something that we're going to have to watch as this area in the Gulf of Mexico is very warm with relatively light vertical wind shear and moist air to kind of work with. We shouldn't have much of a problem with getting any, excuse me, any deep convection that tries to kind of consolidate and something that actually does try to form. Elsewhere, we have this little disturbance with a 30% chance over the next five days. Again, a lot of dry air is going to be in this part of the basin right here, and some upper-level winds uh, will become unfavorable, so not really expecting any significant development with that. Now, we're also watching Invest Area 95L, which has a 90% chance of development over the next five days, and this is gradually shifting further and further westward with time. And again, this is going to be one of the problems. Here's the Lesser Antilles, that's Barbados right there, and this is moving generally off towards the west. Now, how far west this gets is going to depend a lot on Rene and also what uh, might be happening with the ridge of high pressure out here uh, to the north of the storm. We also have this area of disturbed weather with a 50 or I believe a 40% chance of development over the next five days. Strong upper level winds are probably going to prohibit much development as this turns out to see more than likely. Now, with Tropical Storm Paulette, we have a couple of things to discuss. First of all, some actual strengthening did occur overnight last night, and maximum sustained winds now reside around 65 miles per hour. 
Now, additional intensification does not look extremely likely, at least throughout today and early tomorrow. Uh, but by the time we get into Sunday morning, we are likely to see this now begin to intensify and become a hurricane uh, early Sunday morning, according to the Hurricane Center. Uh, after that time, this is expected to turn a little bit off towards the west as a strong ridge of high pressure is going to be kind of building in across here. And we get it, this ridge, but this ridge is also moving. So on the southern periphery, of this ridge, obviously with an anticyclonic flow, you're going to be getting westerly winds at the um, kind of the surface uh, around this ridge. It's an anticyclonic flow or basically a clockwise flow. And this is going to help to turn the storm further off towards the west, at least for a couple of days. After that point, since this ridge is going to start to move on out to sea, it's now going to be caught in the flow trying to turn it off towards the north and east with a weakness now kind of appearing. This seems to be passing right near or over Bermuda. And this is going to be something that Bermuda is going to have to watch very carefully. Either way, it does look like the impacts will occur to Bermuda in the form of dangerous winds. Obviously, this could be near major hurricane intensity as it passes near or just over Bermuda. So this is going to be something uh, to monitor very carefully over the next several days to see how this generally progresses. And then we are also going to have to kind of monitor where exactly this turn occurs because it's entirely possible we see a storm that tries to turn a little bit further off towards the west before finally kind of making that turn and sparing Bermuda from the kind of the inner core structure of this uh potential hurricane here uh, by Monday and Tuesday. So this is going to be something that we're going to have to monitor. But for our friends here in Bermuda, if you know anybody, obviously be on alert, you know, kind of let them know that there's a potential hurricane heading your way, uh, that this is going to be something to kind of be monitoring very carefully over the next several days. Again, you have up until really Monday, um, really up until actually Sunday evening before conditions start to rapidly deteriorate. And after that point, obviously, it's going to go downhill where then conditions should start to improve Tuesday afternoon and evening. So again, this could be near major hurricane intensity as it passes near Bermuda or actually over Bermuda, just near or over Bermuda, and then expected to kind of make a turn out to sea as a weakness in the ridge is going to start to be felt up here. And the storm is going, going to try to be tugged further off towards the north. So this is something that we're going to have to watch very carefully. We can see here on the satellite imagery from tropicaltippets.com that Renee, or not Renee, Paulette actually looks a little bit better than it did last night. Again, you can actually see this morning we still had a relative area of kind of an exposed low level center with strong vertical wind shear uh, kind of pushing these thunderstorms off towards the north. This southwesterly shear is tilting our vortex now with height and it has allowed this convection to fire off towards the north but regardless we have seen some intensification and you can see here on the western side that we have these kind of little cumulus clouds that aren't really developing maybe some deep maybe some kind of shallow convection that tries to develop across here some developing shallow uh, cumulus and shallow convection but as we kind of progress this forth with time, you can see that we've had another deep convective burst that has almost completely covered this exposed low-level center. So we have started to see maybe some signs that the shear is now starting to abate with the deep convection that is now kind of uh, pushing down the convective canopy, at least, is pushing down to cover the deep convection. But we can tell that the shear is still present for one of two reasons. First of all, we do not have the convection actually rotating around. We don't have rotating hot towers, basically, or rotating thunderstorms around uh, this kind of common axis. They're developing, but they are still getting pushed. And you can also see this very sharp cloud axis here indicates that this is a very sharp kind of entrance into the thunderstorm region in the kind of Keleonimbus towers in, in through here. So this kind of a uh, very, this would almost be like an anvil structure. This very um, sharp uh, appearance here on the satellite does tell us that there is some vertical wind shear that is still developing because these cloud tops can't spread out and fan out down across this region because there's still some southwesterly shear. And that's going to remain the case at least for the next 24 to 36 hours before it starts to weaken. Now we can see that here. On the H uh, vortex averaged sounding here, uh, valid 
as of eight o'clock this morning, and we can see here, just focusing on the wind barbs, we'll start here in the first about a couple kilometers, the first about three kilometers or so. The surface to three kilometer winds are generally still out of the westerly direction here. But as we go out throughout height, this starts to change into more of a north, uh, basically a north uh, east uh, kind of direction and we start to get winds that are actually prevailing in the different direction up there So you can actually see what this is also doing is the shear. That's the SRA the SHR uh, values uh, Is about 37 knots and the maximum uh, Shear is roughly about 41 knots now the steering flow is out of the northwesterly direction And that's because if you kind of net all of these the, the kind of net average effect of all of these is out of the northwesterly direction. So this is helping to kind of push our storm a little bit off towards the northwest. And now it's not exactly too deep right now in the kind of mid-levels because, of course, as you go up through a height, uh, that's higher up in the atmosphere. The storm is still rather shallow in the atmosphere, uh, albeit it is starting to grow a little bit more into the 5 to 10 kilometer layer in the atmosphere. And we're starting to see the upper levels now start to be a little bit more of an influence to our storm. Now we can see here on the GFS 200 millibar winds uh, valid as of 1 o'clock this morning. We'll actually push this out here. It's about 2 o'clock this morning or 2 o'clock this afternoon. We start to see the storm actually intensify on the model. Now, whether that happens or not remains to be the big question, but we can see this big upper level low here. This is a tropical upper tropospheric trough, and this uh, extends all the way from the Azor Islands all the way down here. This is basically that large tut feature. There's actually really two of them. This one here near the Azores and this one here uh, basically nearing uh, the uh, Turks and Caicos. So that is causing some southwesterly shear to be impinged on our storm. I and mean, you can kind of see that here, and we saw that on the vortex average sounding of the H wharf. Now, as we progress throughout time, we'll go out to the next about 48 hours. The pattern now starts to change where this actually kind of develops into somewhat of an upper level anti cyclone uh, over the Turks and Caicos. And we get our storm down here to develop its own little outflow pool. Now, you do have uh, some shear here out of the southeasterly direction at this moment in time uh, from this upper level anti cyclone. However, if the storm itself, if Paulette can actually develop an anti cyclone, it is possible that that anti cyclone could be stronger than this, and thus it would fight off that shear coming out of the southeasterly direction and allow more significant and robust intensification. And that's what the model is. Is showing by the time it gets to near Bermuda pressures are down to about 968 and it's established its own little outflow channel and is no longer getting significantly impinged from this a little area of uh, upper level kind of energy to the south of it now as for tropical storm Renee uh, it is likely to weaken today, probably into a tropical depression and become a remnant circulation, uh, probably shortly after that if the trends currently continue. But you notice there is, it is established under an upper level anticyclone, but again, we are starting to get further away from the more, uh, the kind of more unstable air in the atmosphere. And now we start to kind of turn our attention to marine instability in this area, along with the sea surface temperatures have, has been a little bit depleted, uh, by the the kind of eventual track or, or by the track there of tropical storm Paulette, then you start to induce some kind of westernly shear and southwesterly shear once again. So you start to really kind of impinge a lot of wind shear on the storm, which is likely to kind of take it and weaken it. Now, in terms of the upper level steering pattern here, this is the uh, GFS 500 millibar uh, geopotential heights. This is basically uh, you're looking at a very strong ridge here in the North Atlantic, and you're also looking at a pretty strong trough feature across the far North Atlantic waters and the high seas and a cutoff low here across the plains and the Midwest. So as we go on throughout today, we'll kind of go out to 24 hours from now. This ridge does start to break down, and the one reason for that is because we have an upper level uh, kind of trough feature here. This is kind of that big trough axis that's kind of digging in through here. So we have a trough that's digging in across the North Atlantic Basin. This actually subsequently will weaken this ridge and there's a pretty significant gap here on out to sea. But again, what's happening as this same time is occurring, at this very same time, at this very same time, we start to see here the um, 
the ridge here starts to kind of slide off towards the east. And one of the uh, main reasons for that is because this upper level low is kind of now transitioning off towards the east. This is pushing this a weak ridge off towards the east. And again, this ridge around it, the primary steering flow is an anticyclonic flow. So it's going to try to push our storm off towards the west or a little bit even to the southwest. Now, as this ridge passes forward here, this is 60 hours out, the storm starts to deepen pretty substantially. And you also get a reflection of Invest Area 95L, which we'll talk about here in a moment. But you can definitely see that this ridge now is going to try to steer our storm further off towards the east. But we do have this trough feature digging in across the Canadian, uh, kind of the Canadian prairies and eventually the Canadian Maritimes. After that point, this gets on the back side of this ridge and it starts to turn the storm more off towards the north and east. Again, it misses Bermuda here by maybe about 50 to 100 miles, but again, it's very close right now to be actually so sure about five you know four to five days out from now uh, but again eventually this ridge starts to break down we get this trough here and then this eventually is going to carry it on out to sea as a new ridge starts to build in and that ridge obviously is going to try to force our storm even more due uh, off towards the north and east so we're not really anticipating this to get much further west than maybe about 50 to 100 miles west of bermuda and then making that curve so again everyone in bermuda it does need to be monitoring the progress of this system very carefully. Now, if we go here to Tropical Storm or, uh, excuse me, Invest Area 95L, you can see here on the GFS forecast, it doesn't really show up well. So we're going to go down to the 850 millibar level here in the atmosphere. This is hour 36, and we're going to back this up here to the current uh, about 18Z. So you can see here by 18 Zulu time, we do have uh, today, obviously here's our two tropical systems out here. And you notice what now begins to happen out here. We get a kind of a very large disorganized system out here in the far eastern Atlantic. Now what actually begins to happen though is we get two uh, different establishing systems. This is also Invest Area 96L which does have a chance to go on to develop in here in the Gulf of Mexico but our primary focus today is going to remain on 95L. But you can see here that there's actually two pieces of energy here and this is very crucial because if these two pieces actually uh, do manage to kind of coalesce together, it is possible we only get one named storm out of this and that would turn and find a weakness in the ridge out here. However, if we get a western lobe to kind of develop and it kind of moves quicker and doesn't develop as quick, it is possible this gets a little bit further off towards the west before kindly making it somewhere near the Lesser Antilles within five or six days. Now we can see that here on the GFS forecast about hour 84, this is by 2 p.m. Monday, we actually have an established tropical cyclone here on the model and there's also a second level of energy right now coming near the Cabo Verde Islands. Now this system is moving due west but you'll start to notice that there is some differences from yesterday. Our storm starts to deepen a lot here by hour 144 and now starts to actually pull further northward uh, than currently anticipated and the model bring, brings it out actually into the North Atlantic Basin and completely misses land. Now. If we go back here to the 500 millibar uh, heights here in the atmosphere, if we kind of jump back to that, one of the main reasons why that happens is because there's a weakness in this ridge here to the north. Now, this is actually not the circulation of Tropical Storm Renee. This is actually an upper level disturbance, an upper level low in the atmosphere that tries to kind of eat away at this ridge. And you can kind of see how that ridge builds back in with time. We get a ridge to develop, but then we have an upper level low that starts to develop here as well and this would be a favorable kind of path for a storm to turn out and right on out to sea as we already have a pretty stout weakness in this ridge from tropical storm Paulette and now this upper level low is trying to eat out the western side of this or the eastern side of this ridge so the storm actually starts to slow down a little bit and now starts to take a turn a little bit off towards the north now like I said a lot is going to depend on how quickly this develops if we go here to the European forecast and we go to the 850 vorticity map here, we can see that on the Euro we get a similar GFS solution and now the two models have started to kind of come in a little bit better agreement showing that we probably are going to have two lobes that do end up trying to split off and consolidate. But these two storms eventually, uh, obviously 95L tries to turn out to sea and find a weakness 
Well, this other system kind of gets caught in a, a little bit of a more unfavorable uh, wind shear environment. So a lot here is going to depend, and if we go back here to the uh, European and also look at the 500 millibar heights, if we look at those anomalies, we start to really see that actually what ends up happening, you do get a similar weakness in this ridge caused by Tropical Storm Paulette, and this kind of just follows this weakness out to basically out into the open North Atlantic. So there's a lot here that we have to watch over the next several days, and nothing is exactly set in stone at this time. But again, a lot is going to depend on how quickly 95L actually does go on to develop, and then subsequently how the upper level patterns kind of behave over the next several days. So this is going to be something that's going to be closely monitoring. Obviously, if you live in the Lesser Antilles, it doesn't hurt to be starting to pay attention and just have your hurricane preparedness plans ready. And obviously, the same thing goes for the Gulf Coast states and Bermuda as we are tracking uh, multiple tropical systems that will likely go on to uh, be something of concern over the next several days right now, especially with Tropical Storm Paulette, which could become a very strong hurricane near Bermuda. Invest 95 or 96L, which has a chance to become a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico and 95L, which has a chance to become a tropical storm or hurricane over the next several days as it generally heads towards the west and gets closer to the Lesser Antilles with time. All right. Well, that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your morning and afternoon and the rest of your day. I will not be doing a second video update today, but I will have two video updates again Saturday and subsequently also on Sunday. All right. Well, that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.